No, what I'm saying is an absolutely 100% scientifically indisputable fact. I have married a woman with psychic powers. I turned to my long-suffering wife, Marie. Hi, honey. Hi. Did you know you always had psychic powers? Was this something that sort of evolved as you grew up or what? I mean, I am an Aquarius. No, no, I don't no, 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 no. Well, despite that Zodiac nonsense, let's get into this because <laughs> look, some people don't believe they're non-believers. Let's prove this. Okay. Uh, what number am I thinking of right now? Uh, two. Two. Wow, it is uncanny how you can do that every single time. Okay, uh, now a more advanced question. What is the topic of this show? Where did we go to for this episode oh of Book of VK? Paris. How would you know that? <laughs> well, it's part two of a two-part series. I'm pretty sure this is a test I can't fail. Oh, wow. I mean, we're, sometimes I struggle, but I think I got this we're one. We're going to Atlantic City, baby, because <laughs> you know everything. That's right. This is the special two-parter. This is the second part of the two-parter of going to Paris. Yes. For Volca Vacay. Our going, twofer. It's a twofer that we can do for right now. That's Marie over there. That's Frank. Volca Vacay starts right now. Prepare yourself for the bestest, amazingest, and overall super duperest travel program in the history of ever. Vacation like it's your job and live vicariously through yourself. It's time now for Boca Vacay. You know, every single time we start a Voca VK program, we got to give a shout out. Shout out. Shout out. To our newest and bestest buddies uh, in all the corners of the globe that are now contributing being a part of the global empire that is Voca VK. Yeah. We have three new countries to welcome to our global sandbox, and they are as follows. Okay. Finland. Oh, wow. Well, we've been there. We've been. We've been to Helsinki. We yes. should do a show on Finland sometime. That would be awesome. Well, let's do the, uh, South Korea. Oh, very cool. Very nice. Yeah. Very cool. And Cape Verde. I don't really know uh, much about that. Uh, a couple of islands off the west coast of Africa. Oh, my gosh. We should so go to cool. Cape Verde. I love making new friends. We are huge in Cape Verde. Welcome, guys. There's monuments, statues being commissioned, the whole bit. So, yeah, yeah it's a thing. So, welcome. <laughs> and we're glad you're tuning in. As always, Voca VK, we look at all these adventures we've taken. And this is the second second half of our Paris trip. It was just such, there was a lot to do in one week. So we yeah. had to break it up into two shows. Yeah, we really could not do. I, I mean, then you're looking at like Lord of the Rings stuff. I mean, you're just like, it keeps going on and on. So yeah. it's like, no, we got to chop this in half, make it a two part show. So if you haven't listened to part one, go back and catch up. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you want to just hop in right here, that's fine. Cause I we've mean, got all sorts of stuff happening now. That's true. But I know everyone is just standing by with bated breath. <laughs> <laughs> So here's what happens. Let, okay. Let's tell you, uh, while, while we're there, we sort of alluded to this in the first program. Yes. Uh, what happened is that there is a documentary film festival over there. Yes. And we were actually, what, accepted to this a year or two ago or however it worked. Oh. But then COVID happened mm -hmm. yeah, and it, it was, shut down. It was pre-COVID. We got accepted. And so then they asked, do you still want to come? And I was like, uh, yeah, film festival in Paris. Let's mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. I mean, having your work screened is a big deal. Yes. And so, um, yeah, we were like, and I wanted to always take you. Yes. And so I thought this is the perfect opportunity. Yeah. And it was, uh, the film festival is called Ethnographer Film. Yes. And so it's, uh, and we do documentary type stuff. Yeah. And so it's like, no, this is actually going to be very, very cool. And so can I give a shout out to the film that we actually yeah, had in there? for the, sure. The old wood of Aviemore. Yeah. So we shot this film. Um, several years ago and uh we had been entering it into festivals and because of covid uh we couldn't go to some of them and so we got to go to this one even though the production on the actual film happened a couple of years a couple of years that. ago yeah. but then covid sort of delayed what was what was happening yeah. there for the accolades or whatever but it's like hey we had reasons to go we went amazing it was stuff. amazing what a great festival it was so good and by the way yeah. and, and when you guys wonder if, when we collaborate on voca vacay obviously we sit down and do the show together when we do documentaries it's actually a pretty cool delineation of powers mm -hmm. because i don't edit videotapes <laughs> i can't I, yeah, I, yeah. I just can't i'm not good at yeah but i shoot stuff He's a great shooter. And, and she's a great editor. So it's like, I'll come back. Yeah. It's like, here's all this. Bleh, and she goes, and she takes whatever nonsense <laughs> I've shot. She crafts the story together and does all right. But so, we literally, direct together yeah. as well and produce together. We're creative partners. Yeah. So, so, so it's yeah. like, uh, yeah, it's finally good to Yay. be like, hey, we're going to France. I'm so Yay. proud of us. Because so, I always wanted to take you to Paris. So I was like, this is perfect. Yes. Uh, yeah. So we're going to pick up this uh, episode on uh, basically midway through the week. But the important thing is we go to this mixer. 
yeah. for the uh, film festival. Yes. And it is a lot of fun. And this is at the Théâtre La Pique. Théâtre La Pique. Am I saying that correctly? It's in Montmartre. Yes. Montmartre. Montmart. Mont- I don't know how to say Mont- that. Montmartre. It, it, uh, it, it is the artsy district of Paris where yeah. all the uh, people have gone. If they were famous artists, basically they went through there at some point or another. And we said this in the last episode. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to botch every French word that we yeah. encounter because I never took any French and it just does not come naturally to me mm-hmm. when I look at the words to like be able to like say so i yeah. apologize in advance okay uh the reason i okay a little bit about me uh when i was going to high school with brad pitt as we all know uh but no when i was God. going to high school <laughs> no i, I did yeah, uh, yeah. but the thing is i took spanish french and german i took all three languages which, that were offered which did brad take ah uh, i probably spanish okay i know he didn't take german because german's the one i stuck with right and it was the smallest group uh, okay. Span- everyone was taking Spanish and he might have taken French. I, I took French, but it was a nightmare for me simply because I can't do the spelling. Oh, right. Yeah. They will do a thing is like, Bleh, and it's like, <laughs> that is B L E I U A U X I O. It's like, how do you get all these silent vowels in there? That's true. So I, that's why Fran- just, I, I couldn't pick it up. Yeah, I yeah. could not. For sure. So if Marie says, oh, I'm not going to say that word correctly. I'm going to say it way more incorrectly <laughs> than she could even possibly imagine doing. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely true. Okay. So we go to this uh, <laughs> film festival. Yeah. Uh, everything is good. And we, uh, do we talk about the people we met, we met at the uh, mixer? Yeah. Do we talk about uh, Michelle and Alyssa? Yeah. Yeah. We meet, we meet other documentary producers, by the way. Yeah. And so uh, we meet Michelle and Alyssa, and we can go into more detail on them later. Yeah, yeah. But they were wonderful people, and everybody there was great, by Everybody. The way. And, you know, the reason, another reason why you go, let's be clear, why you go to a film festival mm-hmm. and, like, get honored and go to the screening yes, is because there's usually some sort of, like, open bar and really good nibbles mm-hmm. so you know which way is the bar and, and you're not <laughs> fat you're well-rounded every Thanks, time Teatro La Pique for every all of your time. nibbles and all of your 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 booze and your vits and what, what happened in uh, <laughs> they had absinthe they did they had absinthe i'm at glad the bar. i reminded you just now <laughs> yeah. of drinks there yeah what happened let me explain what absinthe is <laughs> <laughs> That's the only oh explanation you need. Yeah, that's all. That's it. That's, you know, uh, of just all, go on that. Of all the various <laughs> things I have actually sipped in my life, that's one where it's like, ooh, Whoa. I can feel that in my toes immediately. That'll make you slap your granny. That absolutely. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> you get the shakes. So I said, okay. So we go there, we meet people, and then we're coming out, and it's like. You know, the, the area that we're in, we are recommended to go to a restaurant. Yes. But as we're walking towards that restaurant, we got to point out there's something about a blue door. Oh, and everyone's yeah. like, there, there's a blue door. And I'm like, okay, there's a blue door. Right. It's like, no, that's the blue door. Right, exactly. You know the significance of the blue door? I do. It was. It had to do with Picasso. Uh, Sorry, Van Gogh. Van Gogh, the other uh, one, yeah. You asked me and I botched it. <laughs> yes, it had to do with Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, it was Van Gogh. Nah, Sorry, that's a trick question. No, but no, it, no, yeah. it, it's tricky because it was Van Gogh and his brother. It was his brother's place, Theo. Yes, Theo yes. Van Gogh. Yes. So Theo Van Gogh went it's and did number a thing. fifty four, Rue La Pique. Yeah, and that you, is so cool. And you're just walking around. It's like, oh yeah, you know, uh, Vince and his brother, like Theo. Yeah, they totally love that. <laughs> it's kind of like when somebody says they went to high school with Brad Pitt. Oh, yeah, Brad Pitt until I went to high school with a guy. You know, Brad Pitt and this guy he went to high school, Frank Barnes. He went to high school with Frank Barnes. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Right now, Brad Pitt is sitting around going, oh, yeah, you know, Frank Barnes. I know that guy. Oh, the Voca VK guy? Yeah, we totally hung out all the time. Not happening. Anyway. I love it. So so we go by the blue door and we're on our way to a restaurant. There's a plaque by it, by the way, if you're looking for it. Oh, that's right. There's a little golden plaque and it explains what it is in French, which is probably why I was like, Picasso. No, it's Van Gogh. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, yeah, so you can't miss it. Yeah. Yeah. But but what happened is that you go by and you see that. It's like, uh, Mm. like, oh, and so you have to get the obligatory picture to show you're a tourist standing outside this blue door. And (laughs) all the locals are like, oh, (laughs) Teresa. Yeah, the snooty French waiter laugh I always try to do. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) We go down to the restaurant, uh, La Relais Gasson. Yes, La Relais Gasson. To which they had something called a hamburger, which I got. (laughs) Now, on this, it says you got potato salad. You did not get potato salad. Oh, my gosh. So, let me explain this salad. Yeah, this is this is advanced, it's, actually. It's like, 
in French on the menu. So it's like, you know, the words for food that I don't know, but I'm like, oh, that's a salad. Mm -hmm. And then it's like got stuff in it. And then it's like with potatoes. And I'm like, oh, so maybe there's like bits of potato. Okay, fine. Cool. Yeah. No, 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 Potato, um, oh, what's it called when you just like not French fries, like Julienne or yeah, like, uh, au gratin or au gratin, au gratin, au gratin cut, yeah. like you know, uh, sliced potato, yeah, but fried like a French fry, yeah. It was like it was like a <laughs> pound of them, and I was like, oh my god, would you like a little salad with your potatoes? And so actually, a lot of people like you would really love that. I actually wanted the vegetables, like yeah. I was like, and for those of you listening. Yes, I guess technically a potato is a vegetable. Oh. But when I say vegetable, I'm not talking about a starch. You're not talking about a root crop. <laughs> no, I'm like, I want actual <laughs> proper vegetables. So when it's like, here's your vegetables with potato. I'm like, <laughs> potato. oh my God, I didn't know what I ordered. And you're looking at it and you're like, that looks really good. <laughs> well, and you're sitting across the table from me and you're, and, and Marie's doing this whole, oh, oh, I've got potatoes. They look like delicious shaved au gratin French fries. And I'm reaching her over going, I can help you with that, dear. <laughs> rah, rah, rah. I've got a burger in one hand. I'm just shoveling in these potatoes. They were delicious. They were. And you're on an excavation like you're some prehistoric <laughs> digger going, I wonder if I can find a salad. And it's like, honey, there's French fries right on top. Eat those, eat those, eat those. You oh, look, it. a tomato. No. <laughs> what is this green thing in the salad? There's a French fry on top. It anyway, was, it was it, really good. It was really good. And all sorts of very cool, quirky, fun little restaurants yeah, in that area. Yeah. So we said, okay, this is a nice place. And we will revisit yeah. this neighborhood later on in our program today. Yeah. Because, you know, we come back for more. Sure. You know, because uh, we have film screens and all that other stuff. Yeah. We go back to our place. It's the Airbnb uh, in the first district. Is near the Louvre. It is in the fancy part with Louis Vuitton and <laughs> Christian Dior and all the other. High, there's no Dollar General on this block. Okay? Listen to episode one for more details. I'm just trying to fill them in so they know to catch yes. up. So it, it's like so we go back to our place and then we go. You know what? We, tom tomorrow's kind of an easy day for yeah. us. We, we need to do something like a day trip. Oh, my god! We gosh. need to get on a train yes. and actually make something happen. Hey, let's take a day trip. Woo! Darn yeah. right, Reed. I love a day trip. Everyone is saying there's a town in the Champagne region. Champagne. Champagne. <laughs> and, and someone's going to say, you know, Champagne, you can only have that in the Champagne region. Everything else just sparkling wine, but there's a Champagne. I'm like, okay, <laughs> fine. True, yeah, I know. But it's like, okay, <laughs> before we start throwing, you know, cookbooks at me, here's the deal. <laughs> For a champagne region, you got to go to the champagne region. Yeah. Did that that made no sense. But, you know, you got to go there. There's a town there. It is spelled R-E-I-M-S. It is spelled R-E-I-M-S. So, I'm thinking it's, it's Rhymes? Reams, I thought it was Reams. Yeah, I thought it's Rhymes. Then okay. we heard it was Rims. Yes. Then... Okay, so this is the thing. That's how it's spelled. Yeah. The verdict is still out, honestly, on how it's pronounced. <laughs> it's the shortest and simplest word in the French language. And we've asked several times, yeah. and we've gotten a different answer every time. The pronunciation I tend to go with is... <laughs> I was going... <laughs> because yeah. literally, they were like, no, it's... Yeah. Or <laughs> oh, you're, oh, you're going to... <laughs> I think <laughs> I just got it. <laughs> Back of the throat. Oh, <laughs> like that. Can't say it, man. And it, it is, so, and it's like so. We're just gonna say rims. I think it's for, because that's pronounced with like what you were saying earlier with like an e a u x is yeah. like a pronunciation of it. So it's after like the r s, r it's like rim. R r I can't. You I don't know. know. It's rims. It's rims. It's rims. So rim. Uh, so, rim. Uh, so so here's the the deal, <laughs> Duolingo users. You will eventually figure out how to pronounce this. We never did. <laughs> but we still got tickets we got on the train there. Right, that's true. The train system in France is impeccably awesome. They do not require you to know how to pronounce the name of the place you're going in order to get there. No, they're, they're, they're actually very cool. They're like, where do you want to go? Sure. Okay, uh, uh, American. Yeah. yeah, you swipe the credit card, you get on. Right this way. It's a, yeah, right this way, sir. It's about a 40-minute train ride. Yeah. And we're on a super-duper bullet train of what? You know, yeah. one of those things. So yeah. we're just right through the French countryside. Now, we got there and we realized that our return tickets were like eight hours later. No, because here's the deal. If you listened to part one of our two-part series yes. on this lovely place, yes, um, we had to spend an entire day rearranging everything for the week mm -hmm. because we found out that all of, all of France was on vacation. Yep. And so we could not get into some things that we had planned only getting tickets for while, like after arriving. Yeah. Because some things we pre-booked. And so anyway, like, 
I kind of panicked because we had to move this things around and we moved this to this particular day. And so I was like, we're not going to have enough time to see everything. We need like eight hours. That's my voice of myself in my head. And then, and then we like get there and we're like, eight hours is too long. What are we going to do now? And then, and then, so yeah, we had to rebook some things yeah. again. We had to rebook within the rebooking yes. so much stress, but that's what travel is. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this is like an episode of uh, uh, that movie inception. I'm like, <laughs> where, where are we now? What day is this? What is happening? Have we fallen off the bridge into the water yet? What is going on, Leo? Don't get in that van. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like no 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 yeah 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 okay so we okay, get okay. so we get there but the thing is like we tell the guys like we, we don't want to can we change this to a a more an earlier return trip and i tried to do it within the app of which that i ordered the tickets yeah. but it was like no error and i was just like why Blah. and it was like Bleh. Bleh. and so i was <laughs> like okay so they said so, you cannot pronounce it you cannot leave right? it right it's the app was not having the mispronunciation yeah apparently. what up dude so so we went to an actual ticket counter yeah when we landed because we knew that we were going to have like yeah too much time yeah so, yeah so we went there and the guy's like oh, 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 oh. and he goes oh, very sympathetic <laughs> just like that very good and then he basically just sold us two fresh return tickets know, without like, any credit i'm like how did this uh, cost more money to leave i know because i was like well this seems like more than what it should have been for a change fee but i'm willing to do it i was very tired too yeah. and so i was like because for some reason i didn't oh we had like jet lag probably like oh still yeah so it never ended anyway i was just like eh, whatever do it because it was the struggle was real getting everything in place for the rest of the week anyway right and then i was like we got back and i looked at the receipt and i was like these are just two new tickets yeah come now, on here's the the upside is yeah. that to get from paris to r-e-i-m-s because yeah. i don't know how to pronounce it yes um it's actually quite inexpensive. Yeah. So it wasn't a big deal. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was you like know. 15 euro or yeah, whatever. It, it's like no bigs, but yeah. it's one of those where you walk away. It's like, uh, okay, what happened? I speak no <laughs> French. He speaks no English. We're, we're just, we're here for a couple of hours. Yeah, we got this. For sure. So it's absolutely fine. So it's like, okay, now the one thing you have to do in this town is go to the Cathedral Notre Dame de Rim. Yes. Uh, we'll just call it Notre Dame here. Uh, but well, it's not, it's not, not to the, be mistaken, not to be mistaken for the one Notre in Paris Dame. or yeah. the school in Indiana. No, this is the one <laughs> that is like, you're going to the Cathedral Notre Dame in Rims. So we go there. Give me the deeds. I'll give you some deeds right now. Yeah. You walk, just walking up to this place. Oh, yeah. You can hear the angelic choir going, <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's so grand. What is this? Yeah. It turns out, we've looked up the prehistory on this. Do it. Believe it or not, Julius Caesar talked about this location during the Gaelic Wars in 55 BC. Yeah. This has always been one of those pieces of real estate they've said, you know what? Uh, this is a thing you might want to check this out. Yeah. So they start building. Eventually, you know, years pass, season change, they start building the church. Yeah. Then they keep expanding the church. Then people start showing up for the church and they build it some more and it keeps going. <laughs> I'm not going to go through the whole history. You can look it up online, find Wikipedia if you want. It is extensive. Yeah. Leaping forward a whole bunch of years in 816, Louis the Pious who was the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, was crowned there. Wow. We were at the spot. It's like, they oh. crowned the Holy Ro Roman Empire guy here? Like really? Right here. Wow, that's the spot. Yeah. This place is fantastically ornate, oh, beautifully so carved, beautiful. little statues all, I mean, yes. every nook and cranny has something in there. And by the way, they were still doing construction. Yeah. It's an ongoing, never-ending thing for these guys, but yeah. it's like, holy moly, it's amazing. Uh, other things they have going on, it was enlarged many times. There's statues of Joan of Arc there from the 1400s. It suffered some damage in the French Revolution in 1793. It's also damaged in World War II. And then in 1996, leaping forward, Pope John Paul II honored the 1500th, 1,500th anniversary of the baptism of Clovis, and he was the first king of France. Oh, wow. So the thing about Clovis that you have to know is that before, apparently, everybody in France was like, we're just like hanging. Okay, Dave. <laughs> and then Clovis shows up and goes, let's all be French. And they're like, cool, or a country. And so he was really the one who united everything and said, so this guy's a big deal. Okay, this is what I have to say, though, Go. about this structure. Yes. So it inside they actually do have a replica of Notre Dame. Oh yes, yes, and, yes, yes. Or I guess it might be a replica of itself uh -huh. fashioned after Notre Dame. Oh, everything was in French. Couldn't tell you. Right. But the thing to note is, is when you get there and go back, you need to go to the windows 
that were done by Chagall. Oh, <gasps> that's right. We took lots of pictures of the windows. Yes. Because they were, I mean, this is like famous artists. Like, I mean. Yeah. They, you've never seen colors this vivid. Yes. You've never, and like in real life. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it was something I to forgot, behold. Was, that was Chagall. That's right. Yes. And they had other windows and they were done in different, um, um, Oh, what am like I trying different to say? looks, different motifs, yeah, different exactly. colors, whatever, but all different these, styles. Oh my gosh. So if you want to like look it up before you go and read about the windows right. and who did what sets of them mm -hmm. and like get prepared because they are something to see. And, and that's the thing is when we talk about, you know, there's Picasso, there's Pissarro, there's uh, Renoir, there's uh, Van Gogh, there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Toulouse, Lautrec is over there. You know, everyone at one point, it seems like, went through Paris. Yeah. Everybody's been going through there and populating with all their art stuff. So it's like, there's a lot of stuff oh, to see. And, and just so when it's good. like, oh yeah, this big massive cathedral and it's awe-inspiring. Yeah, hiding in the back, that Chagall guy. Yeah, he dropped off some uh, stained glass yeah, for us. Exactly. What? Oh my gosh. Really? Can you imagine? Yeah. I can't even. Yeah. <laughs> It's very cool. <laughs> very cool. So now when you come out, and, and you can spend some time in there. Yeah. It is beautiful. Um, but when you come out, the one thing is there's great picture opportunities in the front, uh, inside, yeah. all sorts of stuff. And there's a big open area in front of it. It's like a, I don't want to say a promenade, but it's just a large space. Yeah, yeah. You can back up and get wide shots of it. Yeah. And, you know, you stand in front waving or doing a selfie like a bozo. But. <laughs> and there's steps to sit on. And, yeah, yeah. And just take a break. Yeah. Lovely place. But really then nice. it's like, uh, I think we were going someplace. We're oh, we're about to go pick an Uber to get another lift to someplace else, another part of town. Yeah. And I think you were the one who said, we ought to go around the backside. Yeah, because we had, and I'm glad I did. I had no idea. Yeah. We go around, we're walking. I'm like, let's walk around here to find a place to call an Uber. Yeah, because you, you need a street intersection location or whatever. Tell the Uber guys, pick yeah. me up here because there's no street in the front. You have to walk a little yeah, way. Yeah. You're like, let's go around the back. And yeah. it's like, okay, so we go around the back. And what did you find it's out? It's the gardens. Yeah. They were fantastic. Yeah. All these flowers, all of these, like, I mean, it's all like gridded out. It's like beautiful. It's just this like huge, like gardens in yeah. the back. And I told Frank at the time, I was like, Man, this is like the Moulet of cathedrals. <laughs> it is a party in the back. Like I was like, Business whoa. Business the front, party in yeah. the back. Yeah, I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> Moulet being the French word for mullet, in case you're taking notes at home for English translations. <laughs> But it was, it's one I of those wonder who that, actually laughs at our jokes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. we, we laugh and that's more than enough. <laughs> so we just go, okay, it's it's really a nice little thing. We came around, it's like, this is a great town. Yeah. And, and by the way, the whole town is very walkable. Yeah. Because the, the train station goes right to the middle of it and you just yeah. walk through some neighborhoods like, oh, there's a cathedral. And then you come around, it's like, oh. Uh, but the <laughs> one thing is like, what we need to do is uh, we need to basically take an Uber someplace. Oh, but you had a really good experience. I really liked the gardens, but you had a really good experience with the toilets. I, I, I was debating bringing this up or not. <laughs> I think you should. I think I just forced us to. I'm sorry. Be we had a whole show on tw on going to the toilet. Yes. A whole Voca VK show. If you haven't listened to that one, go back. That was a classic. That was a, cl a classic. <laughs> it's classic. <laughs> so, Love it. It's one of the <laughs> early ones. Yes. It turns out, <laughs> it turns out that there's a public toilet because when you, it, it's not like if you're a two thousand year old cathedral, you don't have a, a porta potty in the middle of you. It doesn't right, work like right. that. Uh, so we were getting things at the little gift shop, and it's like, by the way, uh, is there a restroom nearby? And the gal's like, oh, yeah. I remember, and she speaks fluent English, better than mine. Right. And she's like, oh, yeah, uh, just go outside. And there's a you know little outside. And I'm like, thank you very much. We go out there. It's I, like its own building. I, yeah, it is. I don't usually rave about the goodness of, out, <laughs> of, of toilets. But we go down. Here's the men's side. Here's the women's side. I go in. There is an attendant. And he's just sitting behind <laughs> yeah. the couch. But it's not like he's standing there in a weird uh, fashion. It's like, <laughs> would you like some cologne? And would you like a towel? He's just hanging out. These are the nicest bathroom outdoor. To, I say outdoors. Oh, it, yeah. It's in a building outdoors, a small building. But I'm just like, shout out to whoever came <laughs> up with this idea. Well, here's the thing. When you're traveling, having a good toilet yeah. really does make a difference. It does. It's like a mental thing. Like yeah. you're like, oh, this is okay. I can keep going for the day. Yeah. Like you don't come out feeling like, oh, I need to go like take a shower and just go home. No, like, no, no. Yeah. You, you come out and go, you know, that was actually a wonderful experience. So usually I don't talk about public toilets we've been to, but that one makes the list. Yes, it does. It really it, does. It's up there. Because <laughs> we've had some that are not Ew. as uh, not as comfy-wumpy. This was wonderful As stuff. you will find out if you go back and watch our episode or listen to our episode. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's called Let's Poop in a Hole. Oh, come on. It is. Just to, look, I know. I, I plug Voca VK within Voca VK. <laughs> what do you want me to do? It's again, on the website. I can't deny. I mean, uh, you can't like not see it. Again, it's like Inception. <laughs> yes, it is. This episode brought to you by Christopher Nolan. Okay, so here's <laughs> what we're going to do. We, we leave the cathedral. We leave the garden. We leave the public bathrooms. Yes. And we go find us an Uber because now we want to go find where champagne is yes. made. Ooh, I want to drink some so, Champ, some champus, some champagne, and the one, the one champagne that is there, there are several that are very well known over yeah. there. But uh, Wev is the one, W E V E. That's the one. It's like we're gonna hork in on that one. V U E V E. V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V E. How do you? V- I have totally misspelled it's it. It's like my favorite champagne. <sighs> she has a favorite champagne. <laughs> I go to McDonald's. I don't have a favorite sandwich. I'll just eat whatever's on the board, <laughs> except filet of fish. I'm not going there. <laughs> Turns out, uh, <laughs> so we're going to, we- is it Web? Can I just pronounce it Web? It, yes, that's Okay, fine. we're going to Web. Yeah. We go to Web. And remember, because it is spring break for a third of the country and everyone oh, is traveling gosh. now, it's hard to get tickets for anything. Yes. Uh, and some places are like, hey, just show up. We'll see if we can get you in. Yeah. Web can't. Yeah. We go, and I don't want to say they were rude about it. They were just very indifferent. (sighs) They were probably just tired of being so busy because everyone was on break and bombarding them. Yeah. And this was one of the things I probably should have booked in advance, but because I did not know that all of France was on vacation. Well, we also didn't know we were going to have this day trip at this time because we're expanding the universe over there. Exactly. So they were just kind of like, you're the, they were probably like this. You are the eighth person I've told in the last 15 minutes yeah. that we do not have room on a tour. Yeah, So, fine. But yeah, it would have been nice if it would have been a little nicer. Like, I'm so sorry that, like, it's just... Yeah, booked. yeah, they're like, yeah. uh, they're like, no. They're like, no. But you can go to the gift shop. <laughs> oh, thanks. I can buy something of a tour that I wasn't allowed to go on. Drink your troubles away <laughs> from not being able to go on the tour. So we said, okay. <laughs> Went to the gift shop, didn't get anything. And that's like, let's go over to uh, the other champagne place. Right, Moet. Moet. Yeah. We go to Moet. These people, they couldn't accommodate us on a tour either, but they were very lovely. They were. And so shout out to the Moet gang because yeah. they, they said, you know what? We feel bad we can't get you on the they tour. They tried but to get us in something. They actually did. And they yeah. said, tell you what, here's the lobby. A tour's wrapping up. They're having a presentation. Mm. You go in there, have a sample, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. We're good. It was nice. Yeah. So they were very cool about that. Now, apparently there's all of these underground um, cave type, like where they keep everything. Yeah, like the storage is um, down yeah. there. Yeah. So another thing is, is that if you can also book private tours for Dom, Dom Perignon. Oh, and yeah. Like, yeah. So, I mean, and there's, there's other, like, I can't remember how many, but those aren't the only two that you can book tours yeah. and that you can go down and see everything. So when we go back, we will go and do some more. Of and this. we'll book something in advance yeah. because yeah, did you see Dom Perignon? It's like, well, you know, no, we didn't run Dom Perignon, but right. it's like, you know, these things are options. So yeah. if you're a champagne aficionado, yes. you like it a lot more than I like. I it. do. But yeah, it's like, I'll, I'll totally do that. With yeah. You. So anyway, we, yeah. we said, okay, but still a really good day trip mm-hmm. because the next stop as we're still walking around, because now we know there's a basilica. Well, we were like, what else is there to do in the area? Right. Since we're not going to be able to go on a tour. Not doing a tour. Oh, man. I'm so glad that we found this because it was so pretty. Mm -hmm. So we found, we got on like our maps or we actually, someone had mentioned it to us. Right. They were like, you know, there is also a basilic. And I was like, okay. And so like, and we looked and that's what we ended up doing. Uh, It was great. Saint Remé. Yeah. Saint Remé. Yeah. R E M I. Saint Remé. Basilique Saint Remé. Yeah. Remy. And, and we go there, and here's the amazing thing about this place it's really kind of stunning. It's stunning. It's, uh, it, this is the place uh, that when mm. we, it was founded in the 11th century, there were several important uh, resting spots there, including Carolman, who was Charlemagne's brother who died in 771. Who knew? Yeah. That's crazy. That's where that dude is. And, yeah. and we saw it. Yeah. It's like, this is certainly like That's very seven, cool. There yeah. were only two other people there. And by the way, this is free. Just walk in yeah. and you make a little donation, which we did. Yeah. You know, and that's totally optional. Mm-hmm. But we go in, there's only two other people. Yeah. And that's where we were thinking about, it's like in any other town, this <laughs> would be the main draw. Right. But you're down the road, literally, from the other cathedral, Notre Dame de Rheims. Yeah. Like, you, this is, I swear <laughs> to God, and my analogy for this, Jennifer Aniston's slightly less attractive sister. <laughs> Who's still really gorgeous, probably. Who's still smoking I hot. I don't even know if she has a sister. I don't know. But I, I like your analogy. But, but you know, and, and, she does, and if she does, I'll tell you what, I'm sure she's a beautiful, beautiful yeah. person. But what happens, I'm just like, 
How do you walk in the room? It's like, there's Jennifer Aniston, and, right. and here's my sister. It's like, but she's smoking hot, too. In any other city, this would be the main attraction. It's kind of like, here's Van Gogh, and then his brother, Theo. Yeah. Or here's Brad Pitt, and then Frank Barnish. Oh, my God. Again? <laughs> Again? <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> you know, Theo Van Gogh was probably like, he's probably like the best juggler of his age. No one remembers Theo's juggling because no the other guy was painting all the time. No Woo, credit. Thanks, yeah. Vince. Jerk. Anyway. <laughs> oh, you can sleep on the futon. That's all you get. <laughs> it's Theo's place. So as it turns out, but the, we just walked around. It is a massively big basilica. Yeah. Or basilica. Here's the thing. There were only two other people there the entire time yeah. we were there. It was great because we just kind of got to experience it. Yeah. Like almost as like it, we were, it was all for us. Yes. That's such a good feeling. Yeah. It, it's yeah. like, did you reserve this as a private trip? I mean, is this what like ultra rich people are like? It's like, yes, I would like this entire building for myself for 20 minutes because we <laughs> totally got it. Yeah. Just yeah. by walking in. Yeah. So uh, a really good spot to go to. So once you do the, it's almost like I just go to this one first and then the other one. Oh, yeah. And kind of build up that build way. Build up. Yeah. But they're both very much worth seeing. Yeah. You know, so Beautiful. great time there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we did that. And right about now, per usual, I am feeling peck. <laughs> and I think, you know what, if nothing else, we got to get some vittles because we've got like an hour or two to kill before the uh, the train. We got to yeah. get back on that. Yeah. So our timing was actually really good, but yeah. we, we need to get some food. I, it was, we'd walk. Look, I got on my app uh, every other day and was checking. I'm not kidding you guys. On one day. Yeah. I don't know. It was not this day. No. But on one of the days we were over there, mm -hmm. we hit 20,000 steps. Yeah. So, I mean, dude, you're burning some calories. Yeah. You're going to be hungry. <laughs> yeah. And, you need to refuel. <laughs> and by the way, the 20,000 steps is not like these are on a nice treadmill with air conditioning, no. comfort, and TV in front of you. This is on cobblestones. Cobblestones, yeah. I tells you. And I like mean, out in the elements, like, you know. Yeah, and you're dodging like mopeds and scooters and yeah. mimes. So, I was like, you know what? I can't and do that. I don't. They could have, they're, they're silent. They could have been there. I would have noticed. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, it turns out. So, it's like, so we're burning a lot of steps. We need food. Yes. We're heading back towards the train station. Yes. We're, we're going back in that general area, and we find the promenade area. La Haute Promenade. Oh, yes. Or in America, we like to call it the hot sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hot so, wall way. Yeah, we find ourselves a hot sidewalk. That's what they call it down there in Macon, Georgia. As it happens, we go to the hot sidewalk, and holy moly, restaurants aplenty. Uh, Children are playing. Uh, Frisbees are being thrown. Dogs are wagging their tails. Everything. It, it is like a paradise. It is. We just go, wow, this is actually a very cool place. And people were lunching. Yeah. Like, they weren't like, you know, I have to eat and then get back to work the second. And so I'm just shoveling in the food. Like, no. they were really enjoying themselves. And so I was like, this is lovely and amazing. This is lovely. We should do something like this all the time. All the time. Oh, bye. So we said, <laughs> let's, let's grab some food. And there's just restaurants after cafes, after pubs, after inns, after just a line. Yeah. And finally, I mean, we didn't go down this whole line because it goes into infinity and beyond. <laughs> uh, but we just said... I think it's one of those like there's a table. This looks good. Let's let's just yeah. cool it right here. We looked at a few places yeah. and then we settled on. Um, it was called the A Couteau. Uh, a Couteau. A Couteau. A Couteau. A O Couteau. A, a U X. I think it's A. Uh. 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 Okay. So I went to A Couteau. We had pizza and a salad. Now, granted, this salad did not have potatoes on it. <laughs> it was equally as amazing. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember what was on your salad? I do. I got the country delight salad. All right. It had chev, bacon, and for those of you who don't know, chev is goat's cheese. Oh yeah. Um, bacon, raspberries, mushrooms, and balsamic vinaigrette. Yum, yum, it yum, was yum, yum, yum. So fantastic. Well, okay, so this is a place that also serves pizza. Yes. That I could have a salad or a pizza. Yeah. I'm getting the pizza. So, <laughs> <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Hang on. You're not fat. Oh. You're well rounded. Oh, the rudeness. The rudeness I tells you. <laughs> so as it happens, yeah, if you're watching us on YouTube right now, this is me on my camera. No, I'm on my camera. Oh, okay. see, see what I look like gotcha, here? Gotcha. Yeah, I, I'm okay. This this is what pizza gets you all the time. Now now this where you <laughs> there you are. <laughs> so okay, salad. Pizza. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I wear baggy Hawaiian shirts for a reason. That's true. That's true. So <laughs> I definitely don't present like someone who eats a lot of salads, even though I do. It's all good. I'd eat the potatoes off of your salad because I love you so much. Aww. As it happens, I got a uh, my little mozzarella pizza. Yes. Had tomato, ham, 
mushroom and black olives. <gasps> yum, yum. Nothing too exotic or anything. These are yeah. standard ingredients, but holy moly, and this was good. Everything was fresh. Yes. And it was wood fired. Yep. And, you know, it was organic and, you know, not a lot of preservatives. Like, everything else we've eaten right. abroad, like, it's so good. Right. So, so a pizza is, like, a different experience so over we, there. We yeah. did this thing. It's like, oh, man, it was so good. Yeah. So, we did that. I think we had a Coke or something like that. And then we, we just got back on the train. Yeah. I mean, and that was our that was our day trip. Yeah. And it was very nice. It was fantastic. Oh, I love you so much. <laughs> I we, love you. Get on the, get on the train. <laughs> <laughs> just like that that's what it sounded like now we're in paris <laughs> and we walked back a little bit through uh this uh parisian neighborhood near the train station yeah. and the only thing i remember is that there were kids getting out of school at the time yeah little, little street uh not street but children walking through the streets like they're walking oh. home and the station that we left from was garde de l'est oh yeah yeah i just wanted to point that out that's in right case that's anybody right. wanted to know yeah because there's so many i mean there's there's a garde lot of de la options. nord or something yes. like there's the other ones yeah so this is the one that has the direct to rims <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to <laughs> rims. <laughs> <laughs> we're not making fun we're not making fun we just we're making I, fun of us i'm acknowledging how stupid i am for not knowing how to pronounce yeah. the simple word it was told to us several times and i could never get it i right. cannot pick it up i can't fold my tongue sideways like that to make this sound yeah yeah so turns out we say <laughs> okay uh finally we, we get an uber i mean we walk through the neighborhood we've seen some kids we've yeah. seen some families go okay this is what paris looks like in this neighborhood yeah we grab an uber we head back yeah now, that night we go out again oh, yeah. because we're just packing everything. After a this. good rest, we, <laughs> we rest. We say we're going to go to a tiny craft cocktail bar. Yes, with uh, Michelle and Alyssa. Yes, shout out, shout out. So we say, hey, let's go out there, and they meet us there. <laughs> and for some reason, information was crossed because the expectation was that they have a uh, drag burlesque and cabaret show there. And we'd already seen one of those. We'd so already like, seen one. Let's go again. Let's go again. Let's see what they have to offer for French culture. We go there. I'm all about culture. Boom. Yes, we are. We go in there. And here's the thing that was so amazing to me. Yeah. The size of this uh, bar, it's called Sister Midnight. Yeah, it was great. Um, the four of us went in. We were the only table being served. Yeah. And it was tiny. Yeah. It's just a couple of booths or a couple of uh, high top tables or whatever, small yeah. ones, and a bar running the length of this thing. Yeah. Not a big place. Yeah. So we say, okay, so what are the, uh, is there a show tonight? And the guy's like, oh, no, no, no. That, that's like in, like on the weekends and that's the middle of the week. <laughs> well, you have, you have drinks here, right? You have libation, don't you? Which way is the bar? <laughs> and he said, right here, Monsieur, Madame. We're like, all oui, right, oui. <laughs> all right, let's see what we can do. Turns out we got, and, and here's something, how do I say this nicely? Don't order a Budweiser when oh, you're abroad. God. No, don't do and it. And if anyone's like, I want a rum and Coke while you're abroad, just stop, stop, right, stop. Right. You need to get what the local people are drinking. Whatever the house specialty is, that's what you're going to order. Yes. And you know, here's the thing. If you're going out and you're expecting a show or something and it doesn't happen, you can still just like sit down, have a proper cocktail, you know, hang out, talk. I mean, you're going out to like, yeah. you know, just hang out. Yeah, you're going to have fun. Yeah. This is the only time you're going to be in this place, so why not make the most of it? Yes. So what we did was we said, what are your... They what? have craft cocktails. Yes, exactly right. Yeah. What so, is the craftiest one that you got? The, give me your craftiest craft cocktail. Darn right. <laughs> so they were like, well, you could just do our signature cocktail, which seems like such a logical, like, really... Let's go with appropriate that. ...appropriate response. I should have thought... What is your signature cocktail? And st <laughs> instead, I'm looking at the menu going, what's good, garçon? <laughs> right. Because so I like, blend. Yes, we will take that. And yeah. so we all got the Sister Midnights. Yeah, and yeah. the Sister Midnights, for those of you who are taking notes at home, because this is really, <laughs> is a lovely beverage, it is <laughs> vodka, mm -hmm. jasmine, mm -hmm. cardamom, mm -hmm. and lemon-lime soda. Yum, yum. It was amazingly it was refreshing. refreshing. That's the delicious. word. Yes. yes. It was good. <laughs> so we had that like, hmm. That was yeah. so good. My glass is empty. Let's go again. <laughs> but it, it, it was really a great time. And so we just sat around in a little uh, corner nook and all that stuff yeah. and just talked and had a wonderful time. And by the way, this is in, if you're trying to find this on yeah. your map, this is in the uh, ninth. Yes. And is the Pigel. in the Pegale quarter. I think that's how you say yeah. it. I don't know. But it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It has a lot of bustling nightlife around there. It's an area known for that. And so, yeah. It's good. It's so, right down from Montmartre. That's right. Yeah. So, that's right. yeah, it's good. So we did that and thought, you know what? This has been really good, but we got to go home now. We got to get back to our yeah. Airbnb. Got to get some sleep because yeah. here's why. It's a long day. The next day is a highlight. Yeah. All these things are high. There are no low lights. These are all highlights. But ah. this one was amazing. Mm. And this one, 
we love going to cooking classes. Yes especially in places that we've never been before. <gasps> I love it so Because much. we want to learn all sorts of really cool stuff. Yes. So we said, let's go to a cooking class. And there's no shortage of these in Paris, by the way. They've, they've got these all over the place. But there's all these different options. We said, you know what? We, we need to go ahead and get, uh, we need to do one of these. I was like, if you can take me to a cooking class in Paris, mm -hmm. I will have died and gone to heaven. <laughs> Because I've always wanted to know how to cook really good Parisian things and like duck confit or like, you know, croissant or like sauce it, like whatever. Can you just do that one more time yes. for people who miss that? Because it's so unusual. We have the angelic choir with their harps. <laughs> I was like, if you can take me to a cooking class in Paris, it will be like I've died and gone to heaven. Wow. <laughs> That's a look on my face after I mow the yard. Like, oh, <laughs> turns out we I go there. It. The one we went to is called cooking with class. Yes. Not cooking, cook in, or cook with the apostrophe in apostrophe cooking with class. Yeah. So we go. Yeah. And let's explain something. There's a whole lot of classes that they offer. Yeah. The one that we did, we had some discussion about this. Yeah. Well, the one we actually did was called Mother of All Sauces. Oh, yeah. The Intro to French Sauce Making Class. Yes. Now, if that sounds like a winner, <laughs> let me tell you what we turned down. Oh, yeah, yeah, These yeah. These are the yeah. ones we did not do. Yeah. We did not do, uh, they have some where you shop at a market, get the local produce, and then you make food from that. We didn't that do that. That sounds like fun. It does. They, yeah. These, these are just like, great. Uh, there's a class on how to make macarons. Oh, a class I love a macaron. How to just make desserts. <gasps> How to make eclairs. Laissez. How to make <laughs> French bread. Oh. How to make croissants. Yes. How to work with foie gras. <laughs> and there's also a bunch of classes for families if you want your kids to go with oh, you. So much fun. So we dropped 260 euros. Yeah. It's it 130 euros each for yep. this. Totally worth Completely every penny. Completely worth it. Because we said we're going for the sauces. Because once you know the sauces, it's not like, hey, it's an eclair. And for us, that was a little bit limiting. We want something right. that we could use more practically like all the time yes. if we wanted to. So the sauces we were looking at. Um, oh, God. Uh, th and there were only two other people in the class with us. Yes. So it's very hands-on. It was very intimate. Yes, and a lot of attention to detail. Yes. And uh, also you can't hide. Because no. Because they need somebody to chop. Uh, it's you're, interactive. Yeah, you're chopping, Scooter. Let's yeah. go. Um, <laughs> I chopped a fish. I chopped a fish carcass up. You chopped up a fish with a cleaver. You're slinging that I cleaver. Know. Yeah. We were making fish stock. Yeah. It was fantastic. <laughs> it's like, yeah, cut in these segments. She's like, wham, wham. I was like, wow. <laughs> this is like a Stephen King movie you're yes. making over here because you are really good at it. I love cooking. I'm not getting you a cleaver. You scare me. <laughs> uh, there was a, uh, we made brown meat stock for sweet and sour sauce. Sauces, yeah. Sauces and yeah. a Bordelais sauce. Oh, no, it was a sweet and sour sauce. Yes. But we made multiple sauces. Yes. So and I thought that's where you were going with no, it. No, the, okay. the, the sweet and sour sauce. Yes. Oh, it was so good. A Bordelais sauce. Yes. Those came from that. Then we made the fish stock yes. separately. And that made a fish velote. A velote. velote. Wow, yeah. check you out. And a sorrel sauce. Yes. And then we made an herbal mayonnaise. Mm. And, of course, hollandaise. Mm -hmm. Now, let's point <laughs> something out. There are other people <laughs> in the little area next door uh -huh. in the same cooking with class thing, and they're making croissants. Yes. It smells it amazing. It smells so good. And there's like uh, oh. eight, uh, you know, six or eight people in there making croissants. And it's like, oh, man, that smells amazing. I am so jealous. Then we start whipping up our sauces. I would take a million, like all the classes. Yes. Like seriously. I, I would, you could literally put me in France in Paris for a week and just say, all you're doing is, is taking cooking classes. And I would totally be fine with that because all you're doing is all these flavors, all these textures, all these tastes. It's like, you've got to be getting it. It was so oh good. Oh my God, it was so good. And then, but here's the thing. Mm -hmm. They also served, we also cooked um, part of a chicken. Mm-hmm. And salmon. Yes. Um, what else did we cook? Did we cook something else? I can't even remember. All I remember is that oh, I just uh, kept eating. And we had bread. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember and the bread. The yeah. bread was and exceptional. And we had, it was to like eat yeah. with all of our sauces. Yes. So you got like this huge meal at the end. Yeah. So I'm sitting there just totally picking out because they, there's like, here's bread, like the French baguette type stuff. Okay. Yeah. Bring that over. And they bring <laughs> that over. And suddenly I have, I believe we had seven, eight sauces. I think we had seven sauces by the time it was all said and done. Yeah. And I was like, why don't you try that one? Try that one. No, 
Try this one. Yes. And I am just hoovering down bread and sauces like it's oh nobody's God. business. It was so good. It was such a great class and great instruction and yes. really just a lot of fun. Yes. And uh, it, it was a couple hours. Yeah. But it, it's like, hey, uh, you're in charge of this. You start whisking this. You start chopping this. You start, mi you know, mixing whatever. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I've never made fresh hollandaise, I've by, like by scratch, mm -hmm. fr from scratch. Yes. I've never made a mayonnaise. I yeah. mean... I know I've seen it done. I know I could do it. Yeah. But making it and actually like experiencing it and doing it while we were there. Yes. Was so good. Yeah. And uh, just borderline sauce. Really? That's how that. Oh, that's good stuff. So yeah. it's really one of those eye opening things because we always talk about wouldn't it be nice to go ahead and go to say a fancy French restaurant, which we still want to do, by the way. So here's what I would do yeah. if I were you. I mean, if I were those listening. Yes. Go if you are in Paris, mm -hmm. sign up for this. The facility is amazing. Mm -hmm. The instruction is amazing. The experience is amazing. But my personal favorite is who we got as our chef. So Chef Antonin. Yes. Ask for Chef Antonin. Yes. He was so awesome. Oh, like, he's great. And I know everybody there is probably like awesome equally too, awesome yeah but oh my god no he had a great sense of humor he was he like just like you dove in and he was just like don't be afraid and like he was very supportive but he also was so knowledgeable yeah and he just talked through everything like i did not know this but um when you are about to use vegetables to make stock mm -hmm. he was saying roast them first to get yeah. their like natural oils and flavors out i was like oh my god this is so eye-opening i've been making stock forever i never roast my vegetables before yeah and it's like that is such a good tip. Like, yeah. but he is a professional chef and then he started teaching. And so he was so good. Yeah. Oh and, my God. And it was just a really good time. And again, can't say too, too much about this class because you really have to experience it and just going in there. There's such a visceral sense of this is amazing to get in there and just yes. feel the ingredients, just chop things up and whisk things. It's like, oh. it's so good. Yeah. I, I just really went crazy with those sauce stuff. My one, my one complaint <gasps> I what? don't, it's not even a complaint really. Yeah. I just wish that I could have kept my apron. Like I'm big on like souvenirs. Yeah. And so I wish they could have given their apron away because it said cooking with class. Yeah. And like, oh, I would have like just cherished or it. Or just sell it for another 10 euros. I don't care. <gasps> I want to take that <gasps> Oh home. my God. Yeah. We could have just bought it. Yeah. But they didn't have like, so anyway, yeah. that would have been cool. <clears throat> Put a display in front. We'll take one on the way out. Yeah, for sure. Because it, it was really, it was a great time. Yeah. So that, and that's one of those things because you always think going to Paris is like, this will be a highlight. This will be a highlight. Take a cooking class. Yeah. Take a cooking, take this guy's cooking class. For sure. You're, you're going to love this. Yes. All right. Okay. So now we're over. Uh, so now what we're doing mm -hmm. as we're going through our busy, and remember we crammed all this into like five, six days. Oh my gosh. We're just telling you about two or three days here yeah. on the back end of this trip. Yeah. Now uh, it is time to go back to our area. To Montmartre. Where, to, to Montmartre. To Teatro La Pique. And we go. Because we did this in the morning. Yes. And then we had to go for our screening. Our yes. screening was on this day. Yes. So here, here's what we did is that um, we met with our friends, met up with our friends here. This yeah. was Michelle Noble yep. and Alyssa Wells. Walls. Shout out. Yes. And uh, shout out because they also had a film in the film festival. Yes. Alyssa is Michelle's really good friend. Yes. And Michelle had done a film called Reclamation, The um, Rise of Standing Rock, which was about the stand against the Dakota Access Pipeline. Yeah, the rise at Standing Rock. Recla yeah. yeah, Reclamation Rise. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so um, she was living with all of these tribes and documenting this for years. Mm -hmm. And her film was freaking fantastic. It was It great. was so good. It puts like just the perspective of everything happening and there's so much heart in it. And like, it just, it's a really good experience to watch as a film. Um, and so she screened before we did yeah. and I'm like, God, how are we going to follow that? And so, but you know, it was really good. So, so she did that. And then our thing was we had time. So what we did is we went, we grabbed a quick lunch yeah, and then we went to our screening, which was later afternoon. Yeah. So we saw hers. Then we all went out for a charcuterie. Yes. And so, um, we went to this really cool restaurant called La Maloon. La Moulin de la Galette. And it has all this really cool history. I didn't know it had a history. I thought it was just a restaurant. Well, here's the thing. This was the funny thing. People were coming up and taking pictures. We were sitting outside in their little like yeah. courtyard outside, uh, out front of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And people kept coming up and taking pictures. And like, you were like, oh, they must know that we are Voca Vacay. Yeah. And I was like, clearly. No. Like an idiot. I'm <laughs> waving at people. I mean, people hi, look at me it's like, you doing? Hi, hi. Hey, <laughs> thumbs up. Good knowing you. How you doing? How you doing? I I'm doing all this stuff. Joey. <laughs> not realizing that, oh my God, they're taking a picture of the, the building. building. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's one of the oldest buildings in the entire area. I'm such an idiot. It was I had so no funny. Idea. I had no idea. Turns <laughs> There's a big windmill on top of yeah. windmill on top of it. Yes. Yeah. So there's a windmill on top, and people, and it's very picturesque, by the way. Yeah. Um, and this was done by the uh, I'm trying to think Galette uh, Moulin de Galette. Galette means brown bread. Yes. And the people, the family that started making it there in the 17th century, so yeah. 1600s. Yeah. So that's 450, 500 years ago. Woo! This place has been basically an that operation. That is some history. Yeah. And they started making it. Uh, some of our favorite guys, uh, Van Gogh and his brother, Theo, I'm <laughs> sure showed up there once in a while. Renoir, Pissarro. Yeah. yeah. They all ate there. Yeah. And then Renoir's Ball du Moulin de la Galette painting mm-hmm. is based on it. Yeah. Which is housed at the Musée d'Orsay. Yeah. Which we passed when we went on the cruise. And the amazing thing is that <laughs> when you see this painting, you'll recognize it. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, I don't know what the Lancien, the Rousseau, the Leggett. I was like, oh, I know that one. I've yeah. seen that before. Yeah. It's yeah. a famous painting. Yeah. So it's one of those things. And again, I'm sorry if I ruined people's pictures because they kept coming up. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> they what? knew that you went to high school with Brad Pitt. Boy, but it's that's like the third were... time in this episode. That's... I make one Jennifer Aniston comment. <laughs> That's why they were taking your picture. <laughs> That's that guy that went to high school with Brad Pitt. We're going we're gonna to hashtag Brad Pitt and this. Brad's going to listen and go, uh, I don't really remember. Brad, we, we've we met. We we go way back. Don't start this nonsense with me, Brad. So, That's funny. <laughs> so anyway, so we do that. And that's like, and we are getting, we have charcuterie, which yeah. was great. Lovely and amazing. And then it's like, okay. And uh, Michelle and Alyssa, we go back to uh, the uh, Teatro right up the hill. Yeah. And we say, now we're going to our film screen. Yeah. So this was one of those cool things. And, and it's really nice because we've gone to film festivals before. Yeah. In various functions, either as just viewers or as people who have presented. Yeah, yeah. To be presenting in Paris is kind of a thing. It was it's a big kind deal. Of fun. And we got to see our stuff screened. Uh, and again, it's the Old Wood of, uh, of Aviemore. Yeah. Which was our documentary we shot in Scotland. Scotland a few years ago. Yeah. So we did that. And then it's like, oh. What are we going to do after? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so we went and we went back with Michelle and Alyssa. Yes. Up to their flat that they had, um, they knew they had gotten this not through um, VRBO or Airbnb. No. It was like someone they knew. Yeah. Um, and, but it was lovely. It was like um, within the same block of Milan Rouge. Yeah. And it was just up and it was like on the sixth or fifth or sixth floor. Yeah. You could actually look out and see the Eiffel Tower mm-hmm. at night yep. from the balcony. Yes. And it was just the top floor of this building on the same block. And it was lovely. And we just hung out and like yeah. chatted and then and then we went home. I had such a good time yeah. with them. And, and that's the thing. It's like if you look at the Moulin Rouge, you look directly at the front door, look up and to the left a little bit. That was the apartment. It's on Boulevard des Cliché. Cli- yeah. Cliquey. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. C-L-I-C-H-Y. But you had a view of the Eiffel Tower way over there. It's all yeah. lit up. And it's like, this is, a, it was a great night. And on the way home, there's like vendors around there too. We oh, just yeah. grabbed some crepes. Yeah. And we just went home and ate crepes. Yeah. It was great. It, it, was, it was a good day. Now, so we're saying all that to go, wow, we, we've done quite a bit. Uh, yeah. But everything we've done so far in Paris pales in comparison <laughs> to the last hellbent day of absolute sprintage oh, that we God. faced. Because now we level up. And I know we've walked tens of thousands of steps a day, but this was... So, because, if it didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 no. In part one of this two-part series, yeah. we explained that all of Par- or all of France had gone on vacation. Yes. And we did not know that it was this week or this series of weeks. Yeah, yeah. And they take and spring so, break over three oh weeks and God. certain zones go at certain times. Blah, blah, blah. Everyone's on vacation and so things fill up. It's hard to get tickets. And when they say, book your tickets online, it's like there's nothing available today. We got to bump another day or another day. So yeah. we ended up taking one afternoon when we had first arrived and just rearranging our schedule and trying to like get things booked that we couldn't get booked. Because like I said, we pre-booked some things but we went knowing that we could just show up at some things like the Eiffel Tower right? and it would be fine to just get in. Yeah. But because it was this holiday, the day that we went to the Eiffel Tower was completely slammed. You yeah. could not get a ticket to could go. Could not do it. So we had to actually put our flight. We had to reschedule our flight to leave a day later. Yes. And then we had to stay um, one extra night and our flat that we had rented through Airbnb that we <laughs> talked about in part one. Yeah. It, they, it, there was no, someone else was checking in. Yeah, yeah. And so we could not stay. Yeah, we had to go. So we had to go. So we had to move to another part of town. <laughs> and we stayed at the, um, the Neepsy, what was it? Uh, the uh, Hilton uh, Garden uh, Inn. Uh, Neepsy Paris Hotel Curio Collection by uh, Hilton. Sorry, that's what it was. Neepsy, yes. yeah. And so, um, but here's the thing. 
it was a day of, like you had said, a, a, absolute sprintage. Yes. Because now there were major things that we only could get on this one day. Yes. And so not only did we have to make a company move, yes, but we had to see all of these things in one day yes. that were clear across other parts, like all yeah. across Paris. Yeah. So it was cray. Yeah. It, it was one of those days where it wasn't high stress. It's like we knew we could get it done, but holy moly, there's oh. a lot of work involved. Yeah. Because uh, here's what happens. First thing is we stayed at the Airbnb because we're a block. We're across the street from the Louvre. It's right there. Yeah, but and now we yeah. have to move across town and then oh double back and get another Uber to see the Louvre, which we were right at. We could only see the Louvre on that day. Yes. That's the only day we could see, only time we could see it. Yeah. And so we went over there. So here's what happens. We grab all of our stuff. We have to move to the 14th. Yes. Which is a, a proper Parisian neighborhood. Yes. Which was very lovely. It was nice. To just see how like a normal neighborhood is over yeah, there. Yeah, a non-tourist place. Yeah, all the non-tourist stuff. Yeah. So, so we go, so we dash over there, we check into the Hilton, then we come, then back we- Back to the Louvre. Drop the, we go back to the Louvre. We're running late because traffic is, <laughs> traffic is traffic in France, in traffic Paris especially. Traffic. So it's yeah. like, oh, you got oh my gosh, this is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. We get there, we're running a little bit late. And what they do at the Louvre is that it's not like, again, it's not like Disneyland where you just walk in, they buy a ticket, you walk in right there. Right. They have it at certain times, staggered intervals. So they don't want everybody just showing up like, hey, a million people are here right now. Right. They want so many people in the building at a time. And the building's massive anyway, but holy moly. Right. You have to get there at a certain time. I go up, we find the guard outside. <laughs> Here's the ticket. And he's like, oh, you're late. And we're like, yeah. and he goes, okay, you go over there. Yeah. And, and basically, like, so, yeah, we'll just walk it. We'll show you exactly it where it is. It was quite nice, actually. Yeah, he was great. Apparently, this happens to people. Right, sure. You're running like, I think we're like 10 minutes, 15 minutes late. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a huge deal. They take us around, and the guards on this side are like, Oh, yeah, right yeah, this yeah, way. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> right this way. Come on in. And we totally went in. Yeah. Now, the challenge of the Louvre is this. It is not <laughs> what to see. Yeah. It is what you can ignore. Oh, pro tip. Hold on. <clears throat> yes. When you check in with your tickets, most of the time they tell you to just go to the pyramid in the middle of the courtyard. Oh, that's right. And so that's what we were going to do. But because we were running late, we did it this way. And so pro tip, maybe just do it our way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. That's absolutely right. Because there's yeah. multiple ways to get into the place. There are. And so if you're just thinking think like. There's multiple <clears throat> entrances. Yes, there are. And I just, it was just like, what about here? And the guy's like, oh, go over there. And just. Oh, yeah. okay. And we literally just walked right in, no line at all. Yeah. They were great about yeah. it. The Louvre is so big and massive, and there are thousands and thousands of things you oh can see. Oh, my gosh. It's so much. What you need to do is you can either say, here's what I need to see. But for us, I went the opposite way to say, here's what I, I don't I, I don't need to see this Yes. Here. I have seen Egyptian mummies, and I got nothing against Egyptian mummies yes. and art and stuff like that. It's just I've seen them at other museums that yeah. are more popular with that sort of thing. Yeah. If I go to a French museum, I want to see French European masterpieces. Right. I really do. Or European or like whatever. Yeah. It's yeah. like, that's what I want to see. So yeah. all these people we've talked about, uh, Van Gogh, Pissarro, Picasso, Renoir, uh, Toulouse yeah. Lautrec, all that, all these guys, they're there. That's who I kind of expect to see. When I went, I, I talked about this in the first part of our two-part series here. Um, I had gone after college and backpacked and I had gone to the Louvre and I really wanted to take you. I made the mistake, like most people do, of going, checking in, going to the first place in the building and yeah. getting kind of stuck there, mm -hmm. looking at everything. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I spent most of my time in the Egyptian section mm -hmm. and like I just wasted so much time Yeah. because I got to go up and see the Mona Lisa and then that was it. Yes. And then I pretty much had to leave. Like my day was done. Yeah. Like, and so you really have to like filter or you have to go like, Twice. Yeah, you have to go, yeah, as many times yeah. as you can cram into your trip. Yes. Because there's so much to there's see. There's so much. It's like the Hermitage in uh, St. Petersburg or yeah. the one in New York, uh, the famous one, the, the MoMA or whatever. The MoMA, yeah. Yeah, it's like you can only, and after a while you get, I won't say art fatigue. Right. But you need to be fairly selective. Right. When there's such a smorgasbord. Yeah. Talk to a guy who knows his way about a buffet. It's like, <laughs> I know what to focus on here. All right. So I said, okay, we got to do the Mona Lisa. Yeah. You got to do that. Yeah. We go to the Mona Lisa. Oh, my God. And it's like, let's punch this out first. Yeah. There's a line, and it's a dual serpentine line. And this is like the longest line at your credit union you've ever seen in your <laughs> life, where the line just like goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But you can see the Mona Lisa from across the room. You can. It's just a matter of perspective. Like, how close are you going to get to this thing? Right. So we go back and forth and back and forth. Da, 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 and we get up there. Couple of rules about seeing the Mona Lisa. Yes. Number one, don't expect a selfie. 
Right. If you get a selfie, it's going to be off kiltered or rushed a little bit. There yep. might be someone in the background or whatever. It's yep. going to be quick because you're actually physically kind of moving the whole time. It's like turnstiles on the left and the right of the room that all merge in the middle at yes. the end. Yes. And so you're not up there by yourself. No. It's very like stressful, actually. Yeah. And when I saw it in 2001, they did not have that set up. Now, oh, that's gran right. Now, granted, in 2001, I could walk up. And it was still like swarmed with people. Mm -hmm. I got elbowed in the cheek yeah. by a dude yeah. just trying to take a, he was holding his camera up and wasn't paying attention. And just smacked And was you. adjusting. Yeah. But like, so I don't know, this might be more appropriate because it keeps people from getting like hit in the face. Yeah. But like, you know, to see some art. Like, yeah. But anyway, like it's, it's stressful to get your selfie or to take a proper picture. Yeah. And there was one person who had the best idea and she was a girl who was about 10 years old. <laughs> and her, her mom and dad or whoever sent her up the best idea because she's a child. Right. And so she could just sort of stand there and she parked it there by the velvet rope or whatever that thing is. And she's like, click, 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 click. She just took like 30 pictures yeah. in a row, yeah. which is great. Now all 30 pictures are going to look exactly the same, <laughs> but because of her stature, everyone else is working over, over her. her. Yeah. So no problem there. Right. So, but we got there and we just did the obligatory shots and how to describe the Mona Lisa. Have you seen the pictures of the Mona Lisa? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. And it's much smaller than you think. Yeah. Like as a painting, yeah. you think it's this huge, like almost mural. It's no, not. No. It's just a regular painting. It's just like, oh, okay. And yeah. don't get me wrong. It's beautiful. It's great. There's a hidden smile. There's a mystery. <laughs> I get all that. But if you've seen the Mona Lisa, it's like, oh yeah, that's what that looks like. So go through and see the classics if you don't want to see anything else. Mm -hmm. And like, just, I like how you phrased it. Just figure out what you don't want to see. Yeah. 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 Because you just go, yeah, yeah okay. And there's some statues you want to see there. And there's, some, you know, the sculpture and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Pick your battles here Yep. because it is bigger than you think. There's more to see than you think. Yep. And if you're going to be, it, there's nothing like running, uh, not running, but just sort of making good time across yeah. something. And, oh, there's a Renoir. Oh, right. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I could spend a long time here, but no, I've got to keep moving. So it's just right. like, oh, these things just happen to yeah. you. So, but we did the Louvre. I think we did the Louvre pretty good justice. We did. Yeah. We did very well. I, I was happy with that. It, we did it so well that I was then... Peckish. We were peckish. So here's the problem. <laughs> the problem isn't the loot. The problem is trying to get out of the loot. Oh, yeah, that's true. We couldn't. It's like, let's go get something to eat. Yeah. Because we're both like, okay, we're hungry. We need something. Let's go. Yeah. You can't get out of the loot. I know. This is the big secret. Because, it's like exit through the gift shop. The right. gift shop, there's 30 gift shops. Well, underground, like it are all these shops. Yeah. And then there's all these stairs that go up to different exits. Yes. And we didn't know which way we were going to come out. Yeah. And then we kept passing shops and stuff. And we were like, is this an underground mall? I'm completely lost. Yeah. It's like a subterranean nightmare. It's like, yeah. I yeah. do not understand, but during the zombie apocalypse, you want to lose the zombies, go there. They will right. never find you. God, that's funny. It, ju it just keeps going. It's like, how yeah. do I get? And there's arrows. There's an arrow. It's like uh, whatever the French word for exit is. Like, <laughs> it's that way you follow the arrow. It's like, dude, you've totally hosed me on this because I can't get out. Right. We finally get out. Yeah. We finally find a restaurant to eat at. Yes. And there were a couple of choices. One was like a Starbucks. It's like, well, we're not going to do a Starbucks. There was Starbucks. a McDonald's. I'm like, I'm not doing There's that. There's McDonald's. Yeah. Uh, this was like our one. This was a bad experience for yeah. us. Because we go and we find a sandwich shop. Oh, my. Okay. We had a few off experiences. This would be one of them. This would be, be one of the lesser yeah. experiences in Paris. Yeah. Because we go, and all we're trying to do is grab a couple of sandwiches and a couple of, uh, like, bottles of water or something like that. So, we go around after we exit, and we find the Louvre Palais Royale. Mm-hmm. It's just the street that this is like, or the area that this is in. Right. Um, and we find a boulangerie uh, Eric Kaiser. Yes. I don't know what that is. Yes. I guess it's a thing. Anyway, I'm like, look, they have some sandwiches. Let's just get them to go. Yeah, no big deal. Yep. And Easy we'll just peasy. take them back to the hotel and we'll eat before our next thing that we have to do. That's the plan. Yeah. Um, but here's the problem. There was a guy that came in and I suppose he was um, home challenged. So yeah. he was without shelter. And so he came in and he just started talking French to us. And I was just like, I'm so sorry. We don't speak French. Don't speak it. And he's like, uh, he's just talking, talking. I figured it out, though. He was talking to us like he knew us because mm. you order your sandwich in one place of the restaurant and then you pick it up at the other yeah, end, at, like the other place. Yeah. And so he just kept following us, talking to us. We go to pick up our stuff. They're getting it ready. And then he starts talking to her like we bought. I think what he was doing was saying we bought him a sandwich. Yeah, he was acting like he's with us. It's like, no, no, we're friends. They bought me a sandwich. It's like, dude, we don't yeah, know he's who like, you That's are. Yeah, theirs, but where's the third one? 
Yeah. And I guess it was like, because a place like this is so busy. Yeah. She just gave him a sandwich. Yeah. And honestly, if I was homeless, I guess that's a good, like, re- like that's a good yeah. way to like get food. Yeah. It's actually, if you think about it, a smart plan. It's pretty genius. But the whole time I'm like, dude, if you're going to scam them for a sandwich, just why, how? He could, are- he could have had someone ask us in English for a sandwich. We might've bought him one. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But like, I'm just saying like, it was uncomfortable and it made me really irritated that we were in this area mm. for so long. And I just wanted to get out of, I, I was at that point done. over the Louvre. Like yeah. I was like, and now I'm done. You're done. And here's yeah. the deal. McDonald's or Starbucks would have been a better option at that point. <laughs> oh, it was just <clears throat> Well, okay, maybe not. Yeah, but, but it's one of those things. I mean, it's the nice things like, oh, yeah, we are friends and all the blah, 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 blah. And he was just standing right next, like your friend would stand next to you. And COVID is going on. Yeah. It was super uncomfortable. It's like, dude, stop. So anyway, he yeah. gets a free sandwich. We get ours. It's like, we'll take these to go. To go, yeah. To the hotel. Yeah. Go back across town. Yeah. So now, just look out for that if you're a tourist. Yeah, it's one of those like, oh, yeah. okay, we'll just take this and eat in our room. So we took it and you know what? We ate in our room. I just wish that like the restaurant, I did ask, I was like, does this happen a lot? And I just wish that the restaurant, the people working there yeah. would have intervened at some yes. point. Yeah. Because it was just uncomfortable. It, it was pretty obvious to everyone but them because everyone right. else that's in line was like, dude, who is this yeah, guy? Anyway, yeah, I don't want to belabor work. it, but yeah. So, so we go back. We eat in the sandwiches were okay, by the way. Yeah. And then we think, you know what? We're in this part of town. <laughs> we're going to the catacombs. Let's go see some catacombs. La catacomb de Paris. All right. We bought the tickets there, and we've actually bought the tickets there twice. We did because we were supposed to go on a different day, but we couldn't because we had to move everything around. Yes. Thank goodness it was not that expensive. Yeah, it's no big deal. Here's what happened. Uh, let me go ahead and give you some culture on this because it's a very yes. cultural experience. I'm all about culture. Darn yeah. right. Late 18th century when major <laughs> public health problems basically had to start burying people. Oh, no. And Paris is like, hey, you know what? We need to have a, a time that's uh, really nice. So... Uh, they found a place that was outside of Paris. Turns yeah. out Paris has expanded. Now it's in Paris. But we're <laughs> going to we're going to move this out there. Uh, it was the former uh, some quarries out there, yeah, under the plain of Montreux. And okay. they said, hey, you know, we're going to dig these up and we're going to put some uh, put some bodies in there, and make it the largest cemetery in Paris. They did this in the 1780s. Yes, it was the Saint Innocent Cemetery. Yeah, the site was consecrated at the Paris Municipal Ossuary in 1786 and okay. then or 1786 yeah and then open to the public in 1809 now here's the deal you're going this is all well and good but what are they doing here okay i'm gonna hit this button because uh-huh. i think it's supposed to be like yeah kind of in the tone of what we're talking about okay. i've never hit it before but let's try it yeah <laughs> oh scary it's scary oh, entirely no. appropriate i'm biting my nails <laughs> Oh, no, my Mars, what are we going to do? Let's run this way. Oh, I can't run fast enough. He's got a chainsaw. Oh, oh no. Turns out. It is a little creepy. <laughs> turns out. Uh, what you do is that you buy your tickets <laughs> and you can, you just, you go, here's how it is. The catacombs are underground. Yeah. It's a whole bunch of bones. Ooh. It's hallways lined oh with gosh. bones. It is dimly lit. It is creepy. It is so, like, I mean, you would never think you'd ever be surrounded by so much, like, death. I right. mean, but it's to remind people of like, look how good we have it now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, here you go. Yeah, look at this. We're yeah. not buried underground right. with about a million other people. No, 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 we're good. This place and is- to pay respect and honor. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, this place is uh, not for the claustrophobic. Let, no. Let's start off that. Yeah. Here's what happens. You buy your tickets online. They're about 29 euros each. Yeah. You get them for a specific time because there's only about 200 people that can be there at once. Yeah. All right. So as they're going through- what you'll do is you'll say, yes, I'm here at my time. Here's my ticket, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They give you an audio guide. It basically, it hangs around your neck. It's a little audio player. Yeah. And has a whole bunch of languages on it. So they'll say what language you want. You go English. And they say, <laughs> here you go. And then as you're walking through the catacombs, it'll say like, this is stop number one. Oh, stop number one. You press the button. It tells you what's going on. There. Right, right. Very cool stuff. Yeah. You have to climb down 131 steps. Right. <laughs> I didn't count. They counted for you. Yes. Here, here's the tricky part. It's 131 steps down. Yes. It is one and a half kilometers long. It takes about 45 minutes and it's one way only. <laughs> it's only a one way trip. You can't get there, see your first skull and go, I'm scared. I, I want to go back. I'm turning back. It's done. You don't get to do that. Yeah, it's done. Once you, you've committed, you're going, you're going, you're going, you're going to see more bones and more skulls. Yes. And there's a lot of It's them. a lot. Yeah. So we say, okay, uh, a couple of rules uh, besides not turning back. You can't touch any of these things. And I don't think you'd really want to. Yeah. Uh, but they're just like, you know, don't do that. 
uh, but it's dim. It's a narrow passageway, uneven floor. Skulls are everywhere. Don't yeah. touch them, but there's lots of photo opportunities. It's actually it's kind of cool. It is very cool, actually. You know? and, and so if you're going through, it's like, oh yeah, catacombs. And just be sure, the, the one thing I caution people against be the physical limitations of this. Right. Because it's it's not easy to walk through. Right. It, it's not paved down there. It's right. basically, you know, hard dirt right. or rock or whatever or, it is. Yeah. Yeah, so just, just be careful, but yeah. be aware of that. But if you want to do something really cool, yeah. uh, it's a really good option. And yeah. again, it's just sitting in the neighborhood. Right, It's For just sure. over there. Yeah. Okay. It so, was very, it was very cool, and we'll put up some pictures. Yes, and that'll be nice, so we people do can that. see. Yeah. So uh, we do that. So we walk back to the hotel. Yes. Down Rue Mouton Duvernay. Yep. And we pass what I would like to call one of my favorite places in all the lands, mm -hmm. a cheese shop. <laughs> 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 so we go in, and it was La Ferme de Alexandra. Yeah. And they, the coolest thing about this place was, it was just a proper like. Is it fromagerie or a fr fromagerie cheese? Yeah. I'll, I'll call it a cheese shop because honestly, I don't, sure. I couldn't tell you any better. A cheese guy. Yeah. Cheese and people. In the middle of all the cheese was this big, huge wheel of blue cheese. That, that is they, your language. I love it so much. And so, um, anyway, they would just, you could, I have took a picture of it. Yeah. They would, you could tell where people would come in and bought the yeah. cheese. They would just scoop it out of the middle and put it in a thing. Oh my gosh. And just give it to you. You were so I'm happy. like, oh. It's a cheese shop. All they do, it, it's just cheese after cheese yeah. after cheese. And basically every cheese you can imagine, uh, they've got it. Yep. Yeah. And so we saw that's like nice because, you know, we love us some cheese. We <laughs> yes, really, we do. really do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We thought, okay, now now we're laden, laden, I tells you, with cheese. Let's keep, let's hit the supermarket. Let's hit the supermarket and bring back some like chocolates and candies you can't get anywhere else. What we always do, we buy souvenirs. We like buying small bags of candy, and just because it's stuff we can't get here in the states. Yeah, yeah. So we always go to the candy aisles. Like, what's a bag of like? Think of like a. Uh, like uh, Tootsie Rolls, the small ones that you open or something like yeah, that, yeah. or any like butterscotch candies. Think of those, but in French. Right. We want something you can't get here. Yeah. And that way you, you give them to people or I eat them and just go, oh, look, <laughs> French candy. Yeah. And it's really good. So we go to the U Express, we buy that. It's a small uh, supermarket. And then we're walking back. There's a small park on the way. Everything was so cute and Parisian in this it neighborhood. It was cute. It was just a proper like locals neighborhood. Yeah. It was amazing. And, and their small park had like old musical instruments, like a piano with yeah. like like trees growing through it and stuff like that. It's just yeah, because really just a wild place. Put it out and let it like it was like a it was a sculpture. Yeah. I don't think it was an actual piano. It was like a sculpture of a piano. Yes. So it was like what iron or something. Yeah, it was something like that. Like, yeah. They had like a cello, same yeah. thing. You know, just and they just put it out and they let the the flowers and the and the the grass and everything grow like yeah. vines like around it and through it and in it and up and it was just really cool. It was hip. So yeah, we did that and it's like this is all very cool. Yeah. We go back to the room and we have one more adventure to go. Yeah. Before we do the adventure, the big adventure. We decide we need dinner. Yes. Because we've snacked on cheese, yes. all of which is good. Yes. But then we decide. We need know, actual vits. We need actual vits. And there is a <laughs> Thai restaurant right right on this street, yes. like half a block down. Oh, it was just right down from the hotel. Yeah. Uh, and it is called Thai Street Food. Woo! It is the most unofficial name, the most unassuming <laughs> place. We walk in. We're the only people there. Now, there's a whole bunch of people getting Uber Express food to take away. Right. So it's not like it's a bad restaurant. Some people are like, don't go to a restaurant if it's empty. Right. No, we went there, and there's a steady line of customers that are having food delivered to them. And also, we went early because it was we had early. something else to do that night it, before we left Perry. It was early. So yeah. we got our food, and I'm just mostly going, this is what Thai food. It was it, so good. It was amazing. Yeah. So Thai street food, shout out to you guys. Yeah. Because because you guys are kind of awesome. Just a, a little place in a non-touristy area, just next to this uh, Hilton Curio place. And it's like, it is really, really good. Yeah. I love that place. So we said, all right, that's our final dinner. Yep. Now we have the piece de la resistance, <laughs> which was awesome. Yes, this it, was what it all, it was weird because we tried to go do this before and couldn't. Yes. But it's also kind of crazy how it everything culminated to it and it made it the best experience in the end what happened was we got to go to the eiffel tower yes and we went to the eiffel tower in episode one but as you hear from episode one we didn't go up in the eiffel tower now the eiffel tower you can actually go to the middle or to the top right my lovely bride said <laughs> hey you know what we're gonna do we are gonna go to the top we're gonna go friday night yes we're gonna go right before they close yes. we're gonna go the last possible tour yes 
We Holy were the last moly. tour to go up. Amazing. So here's what happens. We yes. go there. We got the 10 p.m. tour. Yes. Uh, and what happened is that we get the tickets. Well, it's like virtual tickets or whatever. And then you meet at basically a souvenir shop near the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. And there's a couple of guides there. There are two guides. Yeah. And they said, okay, your group comes with me. Your group comes with us. Da, da, da. And we split up. And the guys just talk about, okay, here's what's over here. Here's what. Seeing the Eiffel Tower is it's a wondrous event. Right. Seeing it at night when it's lit up is totally Aww. next level. So we went with a guide and we you can go without a guide. Sure. But it was really hard to get tickets this week, as as you know, and as we've mentioned several times. Right. And so that's how we ended up doing it this way. And it was just direct access. It did work. We read lots of websites that said, don't go with a guide. It's not real. They really can't do it much. It's the same thing. Yeah. They just take you how you do it anyway. Yeah. And I'm like, nope, this was the fast track because that's and how, it's how we it. had to do it. Yep. And so anyway, we went up and you go up. Um, their options when you go to the Eiffel Tower are to either go by elevator all the way, yes. go by elevator to the second floor, or walk yes. to the second floor. And I'm like, yeah, Take that ain't step. happening. Yeah, I'm not yeah, taking the no. steps, guys. I've, my my <laughs> iFit's already said you're good for the month. So, right, exactly. No. no, no, no. So we go with this guide, and so we take the first um, elevator that goes up to the second floor. Yeah. And it is, I don't know, I want to call it a fernicular, but it's not. But it's its a cant. oh, it's cantilevered. That's I what remember it is. the word. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so anyway, it's like a sideways elevator. Yes. And so you go up to the second floor and mm. he does, our guide did this really, really nice presentation mm -hmm. and showed us like all the points to look at in Paris, which were all lit up at night, which were really, really cool. And he explained how like there's a direct line from like, um, oh, what was it? it? It went through, it went from past like Place de Concorde yes. all the way down yeah, to the Musée d'Orsay, all the way down to Notre Dame. Yeah. Like it went, like it was like, you could see the direct line. They were like, they built it that way on purpose. Like he gave us little insights mm -hmm. and tidbits that were like really cool. Totally worth it. Yeah. Or the direct line. It went, no, not the Musée d'Orsay. That's across well, the river. It was like Arc de Triomphe to this, to this, oh, or that's whatever what it, was. it was. Yeah. It was um, the Arc de Tri Triomphe and then the Place de Concorde and then the Louvre and then Notre Dame. And it was all in like one, and you could see it from yes. up there. And it really put in perspective like how Paris is laid out. And like, it, it was just amazing. And, yeah. and the thing is, it's all bathed in these golden lights too. Yes. So it is one sexy looking thing when you're going yes. up this. Yes. And so you get the middle level. It's like, okay, this is nice. And it's like, okay, now my group comes with me. We get the next elevator and go up. Oh, and then you really go up. And then you really go up. So if you're one of these squeamish people about uh, altitude, you go, wow, this one's kind of high. It's like, oh, scooter, wait, go up to the <laughs> high point, the top of this thing. Yes. And that, and you had not been to the high, you'd not been the, apex no, before i had oh you had yeah i had okay but um it was during the day i had oh, yeah. never done this at night you gotta see it at night it was so fantastic you need to go and i, I just I, i'm telling yeah. you right now go at night yes so we go all the way up the lights and sometimes they have like the sparkly lights where the <gasps> lights start flashing yeah. all around you. it happens ever so often and so they just start flashing yeah it's so pretty and it's like this is so it's very nice. romantic it's very romantic oh the romance Be because then you also <laughs> they have a place up there that serves champagne oh the champus and i'm like do we want champagne <laughs> i turn them back next thing i know marie's I'm ordering like, champagne. Marie's like uh here i've got a credit card we're leaving the country in eight <laughs> hours can we get champagne <laughs> they also served caviar i didn't splurge for that yeah but uh, like or you the, could well they were shutting down was it they I think you got the last champagne I of the did. day. Yeah. Because you're it's like, oh, champagne. So we grab some champagne. It's like, yeah, we're leaving literally in eight hours. We're on Aww, a plane. So, so we toast and so have we toast a and proper smooch little kiss. And yeah, take the it was selfies. Nice. And it was lovely. what was very nice about all the people up there, mm -hmm. and I noticed this. People were helping each other take photos. They were. It, it's like, it was a happy it's place. the two of us. It's like, no, you want a selfie, you want to get the distance, the yeah. stuff in the background. So we did that for people. People did that for us. People yeah. did it for other people. It was actually a very sweet experience. It was fantastic. So that really capped off the trip yes. perfectly for yes. me. So thank you for that. Yes. Because you're like, we have to go to the Eiffel Tower. We got to go at night. It's like, yes. So we did that. We finally came back down and then we're walking away from the Eiffel Tower. It's like, ah. <gasps> Our trip is complete. Oh, it is so good. There were things that we didn't do that I wanted to do. Sure. Um, I wanted to go to the Musée d'Orsay. I wanted to go tool around Place de Concorde. I wanted to go to the Trocadero. I wanted to go to um, shopping on, um, I can't remember the name of the road, but near. Champs des Allées. Yes, yeah. exactly. I want, and like. Um, and then what else was there? Oh, the Palais Garnier. I wanted to go see a, a ballet yeah. or like, there were things, but listen. 
We're going to go back. Yeah, we are, because I would love to go Moulin, uh, Moulin Rouge. Yes, exactly. I really would. There, that, there's stuff like that, which, yeah. like, that that would be cool. And, yeah. and again, some of this is what you can afford to do and what not what you can afford. It's like, what will you save up to do? Because we yeah. want to say, it was 138 euros for the two of us to do the Eiffel Tower. Right, uh, yeah. And that's one of those where we knew we were going to take a little bit of a hit on that. Right. But then again, if you get lunch on the streets or yeah. something like that, where it's like they have great street food or a cafe, yeah. and you can eat or combined eat eat for 10 euros right it's okay just pick the ones that you know budget appropriately yeah we're going to do this and there's like look we were in and this is the thing about travel you have to sort of pivot sometimes yes we did do some things uh, when we talk about how much we paid to go in the eiffel tower that's yeah. not the actual rate when you just go there and right. buy a ticket yeah like we pivoted we did the best that we could we had the uh, the amount of time that we had i just and, and you know what if we don't go back, I felt like it was a pretty perfect vacation for us. Mm -hmm. We had a very romantic, lovely time. It was nice. I wanted to take you so bad. And it was, and I, you know, it was perfect really. But like, I do want to go back and, you know, and if we do, I, there are some other things I would love oh, to yeah, do. Oh yeah. And there's things I'd like to add too. Yeah, but, for sure. like, but for what we did, I'd like to add one Michelin restaurant, one right, Michelin starred sure. restaurant yeah. in there somewhere. Right. But overall, really good trip. Yeah. We'll back to the hotel. We sleep a couple hours. Next thing you know, we're on a flight back to Boston. Boston oh, and then to Nashville. Pro tip. Wow. Our uh, taxi, we got a taxi, not an Uber. That's right. And because we could book it well in advance through the hotel mm -hmm. and it was just, I looked on Uber or you looked on Uber. Yes. At that, and you, it was like, it was actually cheaper, I think, to do the taxi at that point. Yes. But anyway, um, she took us to the arrivals mm -hmm. and dropped us off yes. instead of the departures. Yes. Because everyone was leaving on va like there was this like we said this vacation week the vacation thing was happening so everybody's so departure she couldn't even enter that part of the airport she's yes. like hold on she goes down like an access road a baggage handling yes. road and all this stuff and she said you go up there and you walk there and that's where you want to be instead of just going and walking in it, we were down a level she was like just go up the stairs you'll get there the same way yes and that it was so much faster to she get was to the lovely. airport so if you're leaving Paris and it's super busy go to the arrivals not instead the of the departure it's a different thing yeah but you just have to go upstairs once you get yeah. in the building yeah that's yeah. it yeah yeah, yeah. i it forgot all about that she yeah. was great it was great you know as we're doing this and we uh, always do our research on this as you know we're we're looking at all the things we want to convey to you sometimes there's little hints and uh you know tricks and tidbits of things that we go you know what we have these little uh, nuggets of information we call them travel nuggets and that's the sort of stuff that we like to convey to you right about now Ooh, I like a good travel nugget. Oh, who doesn't like a good travel <laughs> nugget? Uh, for this travel nugget, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about holiday research. Yes. Look, we know the 4th of July in this country, and it's a big deal to us. Okay. Yes. It's only a big deal. It's just like, when's the 4th of July in England? And it's still on the 4th <laughs> of July. They just don't celebrate like we do, nor does anyone else. Right. Look, you need to understand that when you're going someplace know what their holidays are yes. know what their timing is know when their spring break is going to be yes. because if everyone in the country is showing up in paris at the same time you might want to have a heads up oh yeah so if we have a travel nugget this time around it's like research your destination country before you go not for good or bad but just for awareness because you want to be sure that when you get there if if there's busy stuff going on look our thing is we like spending New Year's uh, Eve in various countries. We like seeing how people celebrate. <laughs> right. There's nothing like singing Old Lang Syne in Edinburgh, Scotland, where they wrote the song. Yes. That's fun. That is super cool. We knew it was coming. Yes. France, didn't know you are on spring break, but you were. <laughs> <laughs> pivot. 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 We, we pivoted hard. Like on Friends, if everyone that's listening doesn't know, there's a great episode where they're trying to move a couch up a hallway, upstairs. Uh, and they can't make it and, work. And they just keep yelling pivot. And we say that every time we have to pivot. Wait. Wait a minute. It sounds like we're now talking about Hollywood and movie star references. Yes. Well, that is, that's kind of exciting because we have a guacamole tip now. We, we do. We have a what the holy guacamole thing about some very important Hollywood stars and it all ties in like this. What the holy guacamole are you talking about? I'm talking about those crazy kids, those love struck <laughs> lovebirds. Yes. Benjamin Ge Geza, G-E-Z-A. Geza? That's his, Geza, Geza Affleck. That's his middle name? I don't know. I never knew that. I, I, I know I know it now, and I can't unknow it. <laughs> I can't unknow it now. We'll call him Ben. Ben Affleck <laughs> and J-Lo, Jennifer Lynn Lopez, got married. Oh, they did. The, Jennifer, a, the original. We usually don't do entertainment news, but it's all going to tie together. This is Jennifer 2.0. There you go. 
<laughs> it's like the beta version, only improved. Turns out they wanted to get married. So they go to Clark County, Nevada, which yes. is the home of uh, Las Vegas. Yes. They go to Clark County. They actually... The, I didn't really, I was never a Ben Affleck fan. Yeah. And Jennifer Lopez could walk in right now. I don't know how well I'd recognize her. Yeah. It's not my style of music. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, okay. And, and whatever. But I really like them now. And here's why. They went to the Clark County clerk's office to get a marriage license on a in, Friday in night Vegas. in yeah. Vegas. Mm -hmm. They waited in line with everyone else. Oh, they waited for so the nice. other four couples yeah. in front of them. They got the license. Then they got in their car and they go whipping over to a little white wedding chapel. That's yes. what's called a little white wedding chapel. Aww. They go there. The place is closing down. Oh. They're closing. The, uh, they yeah. wanted Elvis personator to marry them. Turns out, literally, he had left the building. <laughs> so, so they said, can we do anything? And she walks in first. They're like... She looks kind of, and then someone's <laughs> like, is that Jennifer Lopez? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and apparently they're the nicest people about, yeah, I'm here to get married, here to get married. Da, da. Yeah. Okay, here's room, take you in the back, cut the dress on, all that stuff. Yeah. She does that. Ben Affleck comes walking in. The guy doesn't recognize him at all. <laughs> and he says, he's like the most regular guy. He comes in, hey, how's it going? And he goes, you need to change? Oh, I can just do it right here, throw a jacket on. Then the guy goes, oh, you're Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, yeah. Oh, uh, and uh, they had, uh, you know, a couple of people there to witness it. They got the $75 standard ceremony, Aww. which is kind of nice. Yeah. They wrote their own vows. Yeah. And uh, yeah, th they just said, we're going to totally do this. And they got married in Vegas. And you can too, if you want to exchange your vows, renew your vows, whatever you want, affirm your vows, whatever you want to do, yeah. you can do it for 75 bucks at a little white chapel, a little white wedding chapel in Las Vegas and do it right where Benefer got hitched. And so it's apropos to this episode as well, because then they took their honeymoon in Paris. Yeah. And so everyone's rooting for them because they yeah. had that tumultuous relationship when they were first together. Yeah. They like, it was like so covered by the paparazzi and like people were so, I mean, and they did that movie Geely and it didn't yeah. do well. And everybody was kind of like throwing rocks at him. And then I think it tore him apart. And so it was, and then they broke up and he had like a drinking problem. Okay, I really follow way too much you and do. know more than I should about Benefer. But like, <laughs> anyway, I, the thing is, is that I'm rooting for them. So in Paris, she, this is the thing that like I read recently. Aww. I can't remember the name of the designer, but they, they were, they were seen out in a Parisian park, just hanging out in the morning. And she had on a $2,000 dress, but like with some like really cheap, like $10 flip flops. Yeah. Or I think they said $50 flip -flop or yeah. something. But, and I know $50 sounds kind of expensive for flip-flops, but relative to the dress. So that would be like me having like a $200 dress and a $10 pair yeah, of flip-flops. Or, or, or you know, Ben anyway. Affleck showing up in a tuxedo with some Crocs. Right, you know? exactly. And like, oh, yes, that's exactly. what you're doing, Ben. Yeah. But anyway, good for them. But they honeymooned no, in Paris. They did. And uh, I'm sure they saw the same sites that we did. I'm sure. Maybe they'll listen to this episode yeah. and take some pointers. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and I, yeah, I didn't know they were engaged from 2002, 2004. I, I forgot all about that. I know. Well, anyway, there good for you them. Go. They've been to Paris. We've been to Paris. If you're listening to us, you should go to Paris too. You should. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for checking us out this oh, uh, this man. time around. So much fun. And well, of course, check the social a, media stuff. Yeah, check the socials. This was our wrap up of our, this is part two of our two part series. Two for two. On Paris. Darn right. And remember, as always, hey, live vicariously through yourself and vacation like it's your job. That's right. We'll catch you next time. That's Marie over there. That's Frank. Voca Vacay signing off. We'll see you next time. Love ya. Miss, Miss ya, ya. Mean, mean it. it. Bye. Don't forget to click subscribe. As always, hashtag VocaVacay at VocaVacay and visit VocaVacay.com. <laughs>